have reason to rejoice today. Amen. Amen. Give the Lord praise often. He is on the throne. He delights in his people. He lives in the praises of his people. Heaven is full of praises. Heaven will be full of, of songs and acclamation, <coughs> declaring the Lord who he is. I believe heaven starts now to a degree that we can give praise to the Lord while we're on the earth. The psalmist said, let everything that hath praise, praise the Lord. Have you have reason to praise the Lord? Amen. Jesus is king. He's not only the king, but he's the coming king. He's coming back. He's going to take us from this place into his, his place, the heaven above forever and forever with him. Until then, we must uh, labor faithfully, be steadfast, immovable, as it says, Paul said to Corn. I want to take us to a familiar passage. Probably you know this by heart. Some of you probably memorized this portion, at least in part. Philippians chapter 4 is one of those verse, few verses that we can just sort of really dig into and find something that will help us. Hopefully that today... Uh, you're, you're doing good. Hopefully that to tomorrow you'll be doing better. And on and on it goes. Sometimes we are, are going through things that the Lord only, the Lord understands. Sometimes holidays can be the toughest parts of the year for families. As much uh, I believe that they can be great times, they ought to be, that the, sometimes there are, there are things that have gone on and going on that are we struggle and so we need the Lord we need the Lord's grace in all that we are uh, going through and pressing toward and so how many know that this life is without conflict amen where wherever two or three are gathered together in his name he is with us but ever wherever two or three are gathered period there could be time of conflict Oh, let's not be scared of that. Let's love one another. Let's be listeners to one another. No, so the fourth chapter of Philippians deals with a subject that we're going to get to. It speaks about how we ought to have our attitude towards this life. But he begins by uh, mentioning at least two people I will not ask you how to pronounce these names. In the second verse, he says, I urge, I'll do the best I can. I believe it's Udia, 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 and Sintik. Yeah, Sintik. Somebody, if, if I'm saying it wrong, point it out. Sintik, is that similar to something? We don't know much about these guys. In fact, all we know is that in verse 3 it says, Indeed, indeed true Carmen, I ask you also to help these women. So we know that they were women folk. They have shared with Paul's struggle. They have shared with my struggle in the cause of the gospel. Together with Clement also and the rest of the fellow workers whose names are in the book of life. So he, backing up the verse, he urged them to live in harmony. Guess what? The enemy doesn't want us to live in harmony. And if he can distract us or disrupt us or try to divide us, he will. Well, guess what? Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. We're not going to let the enemy botch our plans. We're not going to let the enemy take away our joy. We're not going to let the enemy begin to confuse us. Guess what? God is not the author of confusion. What we want and what we can have today, and this is the gist of this message, that when our hearts are toward God, we get this unbelievable sense of peace. I don't know about you, but you can't put a price tag on peace. Nothing in this world, yeah, there's a few things that can help us. I know we love to go to the woods, hunters. Well, we love to go to the fishing lakes. It's great. God has blessed us. We get to live in this place. But there's 
nothing that can take the place of the almighty presence when he begins to settle in upon us and we begin to sense that in spite of what I'm facing, O oh Lord, in spite of what I may be even feeling today, there is this undergirding, there is this foundation in which I can stand and that I can rest in today that it's his problem. I've just transferred it on over to the shoulders of my Lord. That I'm not, I don't have the ability to do what he can only do. So no wonder Paul says in verse 4, in spite of the conflict, in spite of the sometimes disagreements, he says this in verse 4, rejoice in the Lord always. How can he say that? Because he's experienced it. He was the one who with his co-worker Paul and Silas about midnight in the prison cell as they were locked in the stocks and the chains and they were in misery. Hey, let's sing. Have you ever tried it? Try it if you haven't tried it. I'm not saying that you've been locked up. I'm not saying that you have to be you know, have chains on you, but sometimes there are things that are life that liken, they're likened to be locked up. You're likened to be being held captive. And guess what? Jesus comes to set the captive free today. And he wants to give to you this joy. So Paul, Paul and Silas began to sing. Something happened in, the, in a supernatural way. The jail cell, the, this prison began to shake. The shackles fell off. They stood up on their feet and began to exit the place. Unbelievably, the jailer cried out, what must I do to be saved? You see, in your pain and in your struggles, we are surrendered to the Lord. People are watching on. People are observing how you, you and I respond. This forbearing spirit, verse 5, let your forbearing spirit be known to all men. What in the world is a forbearing spirit? I would say it's something to the effect that is what kind of reflection, what kind of Light is coming from you, your attitude, your spirit being joined with God's spirit begins to proclaim, begins to declare the things of God as you walk one step in front of the other. Friends, you may not have all the answers, it's okay. May not have all the solutions, it's okay. May not know how you're going to make ends meet. Our God is a provider. Our God has the wisdom. Our God has a plan. And he is be calling us to this, number one, to love God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength. And if we are loving God, we're less apt to become anxious. Let me say, less apt less apt now because we live in a human body we understand anxiety right we understand there's days when you feel overwhelmed you wonder how you can make it maybe you're feeling like this is too much for me well what does the Lord call us? What does the Lord call us to do in those times? He says, rejoice. He says, begin to place your thoughts upon me. He says, begin to think about me. He began to think about it. Hebrews, it said, you talk about what Jesus went through on the cross. You begin to look at what he agonized for you and I. And he took it all for our sake. And he took all our, all our sin upon himself. And he still yet is able to say to the person on the cross next to him, you will today, he forgave him that very day, that very moment before he entered into eternity, he forgave that man who said, remember me. Our God loves sinners. 
God loves misfits. God loves to take messes and bring restoration. How many guys here have ever restored something? Maybe an old car, maybe it was a piece of furniture, maybe it was an old house. What did you feel about that, you know? Pretty proud. How about you ladies? How many know it needs a lady's touch? Sometimes the place needs a lady's touch. And they're gifted to make things just nice. They can decorate, they can do things that men often, eh, men are just slide over, guys. <laughs> Let those who are good at it. Listen. Why do we worry about so many things? I speak to us as humans. Why are we bothered by so many things? Why can't we be like a Mary who sat at the feet of Jesus when Jesus was in the house? I'm not saying that work is... We absolutely need to be good workers. I believe that Christians believe walking with the Lord, we, we ought to be the, on the top of the list. But there is this idea that I don't have all the answers, but I don't maybe not even have all the things that I think I have a need of. Isn't there a difference between your needs and your wants? Right? How do many ever watch Veggie Tales? Yay! All five of you, six of you. I grew up with VeggieTales. <laughs> because Cody and Levi watched it. I don't know about the girls. Did you? My favorite one, one of my favorite ones was Madame Blueberry. Right? You remember that thing? What was her problem? She was always wanting more. And if you can remember her house that was built on the tree and that thing was getting so loaded up, it started to bend. Remember that? And it bent, it bent, and just about broke. And, and she gets to the supermarket, Stuff Mart. <laughs> kind of a takeoff from Walmart. <laughs> Stuff Mart. She's going through this place. Her card is heaped. And she says, I want that. And then someone says, you don't need that. Yeah, but I want it. Cute little story. Powerful little message. How much do we need? How much do I need to really be happy? We're figuring this out as life goes on. What I thought I needed when I was younger didn't pan out. Didn't really matter. When I thought that truck that shined so nicely would be so nice for so long. Well, I told you about the first scratch. Well, after that, it was all downhill, right? <laughs> Just brutal. You know, you got this nice, shiny, you're, you're kind of proud of it. Be kind of careful, don't, 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 don't put the wheelbarrow, don't, got to go through the tailgate. And after the first scratch, it was like, oh well, it's just stuff. It's just material. And we get, we get stressed. And life has these moments where we're tested. You see, stuff is okay. Love stuff. I know, my yard is overdue with <laughs> rendering stuff. How much stuff does a man need to be happy? Well, it's really not about stuff making you happy, is it? It really doesn't come down to that. So I call my stuff my tools. 
they help me make a living. So what am I going to do with this extra car or two or three or truck or extra truck or two or three that are not working right now? See what I'm saying? We get filled with life. Life gets busy. I hear about people that are downloading. I hear about people. I wonder how that works. I mean, it's great. Got to be great. How many have downloaded over the last several? Or you're working at it. Downloading means you're kind of getting rid of things. You like you don't need all this stuff to be happy. It boils it all down. What I want is my Lord. What I want is my family and my Lord. I want my family to love God. And if that's going to happen, in order for that to happen, I need to be a person that will lead by example. At least it will help my family. At least it will encourage them. I said it a couple Sundays ago, I think, that when dad goes to church, when dad went to church, when my dad went to church, it was special. Yeah, mom was good, too. It was all good. Dad had to, he worked through some things. The farm was struggling. It was hard for him to get there on Sunday morning, but he would try to get there Sunday night. You see what I'm saying? What we do, what we prioritize, what's valuable as, our, as a family, what we demonstrate to our kids, What's most important? What's the most important thing? It comes down to this. Am I thankful with what I already have through Jesus Christ? Or am I always wondering what it would be like to have that thing or this thing? Always looking on the other side of the fence. It's greener over there. We must realize God is with us where we're at right now, right today. You may not always be excited about your circumstances, about your trial and your tribulation. Listen, he doesn't say that you're not going to go with, you're, you're going to go through this life. He didn't say it's going to be all hunky-dory and they were never going to have a problem, did he? But he said this, be anxious for nothing. He said our hearts can be filled with peace by, because if we pray with this thanksgiving, uh, we pray with thanks in our hearts. Verse 6, we make our request. Did you know that God knows your heart before you lay it out? Well, what is this? God asks you to humble himself, humble yourself rather, and ask the Lord. Ask and it should be given unto you. Knock and it should be opened. Of course, God can say yes or no. He knows best. And so by the middle of the week, life is on. It's going full speed. I don't know about you on Mondays, but it takes me a while. Are you like me at all? It takes me a while. It never quite used to be this way. I could get out of bed, hit the road running, but now it takes me longer. Some of you are going, yeah, uh-huh, uh-huh. What is it all? It's the aging thing. Or maybe it's we, we should be getting wiser. Or we have learned the discipline of, let's call upon the Lord. We can't go into this day without Jesus. We can't just assume that we have our marching orders. And so we draw, draw. And some of us, uh, we, we draw on the, on the run. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm one of them. We sometimes are just, we're on the, on the drive to work, we're, we're praying. Or we're singing a song. Go for it. Rejoice in the Lord always. Don't wait for just Sundays to come around. Rejoice in the Lord on the following days. Rejoice. Some of you guys might rejoice a bit in the showers. What? Huh? Huh? What is it about the shower? Yeah, you're singing a little bit. You're talking to the Lord. 
I don't know. It's just maybe it's because we feel alone and safe and secure. Right? Maybe not. God is good. Life is good. Don't we have a, are we blessed? Think about it. I was fortunate enough to be born to, into, born, born, born into a Christian family, a mom and dad. Not everyone has had that privilege. They just did the best with what they had. Boy, Linda, remember those roast beef dinners that Sunday morning mom would, man. Or her scalloped potatoes. You know, you just, yeah, the spirit left the house at noon. We were, you know, it was, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Good memories. Thanksgiving was every Sunday for me at home. What kind of memories are we building? May we just pour into our kids, grandkids, our neighbors, our peoples, your friends. When you pray with thanksgiving, when you begin to call your blessings before the Lord, when you begin to name your blessings before the Lord, what happens in your heart? You begin to say, you know what? I've got it pretty good. I just, I'm convinced that things begin to turn around in our thinking. That you know what? Look, look what the Lord has done. Look what God has provided. Look how God is for us. And this wonderful peace, it is a guard for you and I. It shall guard your hearts, verse 7, and guard your hearts, and guard your hearts and your minds. That you know, begin to sort out. It's a whole lot easier when you're at peace to begin to think rationally than otherwise. If you're upset, you can make irrational decisions. You know what's a barometer for you and I? I believe that to follow the will of God is the very thing His peace. His peace underlies, lays out. The path that is before us. Then we get on right into this next verse 8. He lists what we should think about. So my son often says to me this, what you thinking? Cody, remember? Cody? I'll be working beside him, and he'll go, what you thinking? Because if most of us are like you or me, if you guys are like me, I say, I'm nothing. That's not true, is it? It's just that we don't want to tell them what we're thinking. Or it doesn't really matter. You know, there's a powerful tool God has given to us that we have a mind. And you know what the scripture says? Paul described it this way, we can have the mind of Christ. The mind of Christ, what is that? You mean we can think with his wisdom. We can make decisions based upon the moral values of his word. We can save ourselves from a whole heap of trouble. of pain and agony because we thought it through and look at this verse, whatever is honorable, whatever is true, whatever is right. You have to take a long time to begin to sink, soak in these, ver these, these verbs, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is good re repute. I think that has something to do with a good report. And if there's any excellence, if anything worthy of praise, let your mind dwell on these things. There's so many people that don't have an idea. They've got caught up. They've become embittered. I'm talking about in our world. There are a few people 
that can't find anything good with anything. And the problem is if we, we begin to listen to that, we can go down the same path. And we too can find ourselves, there really isn't any hope. But it's not true. For the believer, there's hope. For you and I, there's a future. There's a plan that he has for us to, to go forward. There's an eternal plan that he has for us. Spend all eternity with him. How could Paul look past his circumstances, his, his trials, his, his weight that he carried for the churches? How could he get through to the next day? It was this very kind of thing, this weaponry that he had. That he had the mind of Christ. That he could look past the pain and someday see healing, someday see restoration, see someday where there were two siblings that could never get along begin to get along, that there would be healings across our communities situations. God is good. God is for his people. God wants us to learn these things. God wants us to live above that what the world begins to try to expect or throw on us. God has another plan, and that is to walk with him, to believe on his truth. Truth sets you and I free. You shall know the truth, Jesus said. And the truth shall set you free. I'm going to talk to you about change. Jesus called the 12 disciples. They were not perfect. They were ordinary people. That he saw a future. That he saw potential. You see, sometimes we need an encouragement. You don't see the potential, Jesus sees the potential. When nobody else sees the potential, God sees the potential. Why don't we look at people with the potential of Jesus? Why don't we look at people who we, we wonder, oh my. We say it in our heart, we don't say it out loud, we go, oh boy. There's potential, everyone has potential to change. There's hope because Jesus is the changing business. He's the transformer. He's the one who changes the inside first. And the disciples weren't getting it completely. They were upset when Jesus was referring to leaving. I mean, he, they, he had become their life. But what God had in mind, what Jesus had in mind was to leave them. He said, my peace I give to you. My peace I give to you. And he referred to the Holy Spirit who will be with you always, never leave you, will never forsake you, never will give up to you. Listen, how many times do we allow the battle, the rage, I mean rage, our thinking, and our mind. The battle is often right up in our thinking, how we are processing. Sometimes if you're like me, I begin to, mm, uh, begin to think the worst that could happen. Or what if this? Or what if that? Oh no. Right? Panic. It's then where I need the prompting of the Holy Spirit, the reminder, let's go back, let's go back. Let's take a step back. Let's look upon Jesus. See, in construction, in my experience, is how you get started If you don't get started square, you're going to fight it. If that building's off, you'll fight it to the roof. You'll fight it through the 
every room. But with Jesus, he's still in the construction business. He sees people. You come to me, and I will square things up. I will take your sins away. I will give you a new heart. I will fix the things in my timing. And you begin to build now with excellence. Not going to be perfect, but God begins to build because he, he's got your heart. Has God got your heart? Will you let God have your heart today? Will you say, Lord, here I am. As the psalmist says, search me, O God, and know my heart. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Will you allow yourself to come and eat the lamp of the Lord? And his lamp is a light unto our feet. Try me and know my anxious thoughts. That's that word anxious. 139th Psalm, 23 to 24. See if there be a hurtful way in me and lead me in the everlasting way. God has a, a good path for us. God only has one foundation. <laughs> it's only one Lord, and I'm so glad. We have reason to rejoice. We have reason to, to have hope. Jesus comes to give us. You guys ready to do it?